Hello everyone, what's up? In this video, we are going to look at the first four problems from the recent court forces Div2 round 681. Let's get started. The first one is called kids sitting. In this, we need to find out n numbers from the range 1 to 4 n. Yeah, 1 to 4 n such that uh, if we pick any two numbers from those n numbers, neither of these two conditions should be satisfied. If we pick any two numbers, GCD of those two numbers should not be equal to 1 and uh, one should not divide the other. Now let's see how we can solve this problem. So we can choose the numbers. We need to choose n numbers from 1 to 4 n. What we can simply do is we can start choosing numbers from 4n and we will choose all the even numbers and the, our last number will end at 4n so our number should be 4n 4n minus 2 4n minus 4 so on till we have found n such numbers the last number of this would be uh, i guess 2n plus 2 so these are the n numbers which we can pick and the GCD of, if we pick any two numbers from them, the GCD of uh, those two numbers would be at least 2. Yes, it can be greater than 2 as well, but if this satisfies our condition and, near, and also the second condition would not be met. Let's pick an example for n is equal to 100. So, we'll choose, start picking the numbers from 4n, which is 400. Then we'll pick 398, 396 and so on till 202. So if you can see these are 100 numbers and as all the numbers are even the GCD of any two numbers would be greater, greater than or equal to 2 and if we see the largest number 400 now if we are considering the 400 the uh, larger divisor which we, which we can have a 400 obviously not equal to 400 is 200 it is the largest proper divisor of 400 but the smallest number of our range which we then n numbers which we have picked the smallest of them is 202 and the larger divisor of 400 proper divisor is 200 itself so in this range there is no number which divides 400 similarly for 398 the largest proper divisor for 398 would be 199 and as even the numbers which we have picked the smallest of them 202 is greater than equal to greater than 199 so the second condition is also not uh, not met for any of the pairs like this will not be satisfied for all any of the pairs and this is also not, not satisfied so we have picked all those n numbers now to the next one which is called saving the city yeah i forgot to mention the code for a let's see the code i started it is very simple we start from we can also start from 4n minus 2 and then we can decrement the number by 2 till we have found n numbers yeah, let's see the second one it is called saving the city so we have n cities in a straight line the city security service discovered that some buildings were mined and if a particular building is mined that uh, yeah we have we have a string of length n and there are n buildings for a particular index, if the string is containing 1, it means that building contains a mine in uh, below the building, underneath the building. And if that particular character is 0, it means there is no mine present below the building, under the building or you can say, yeah. So, burst towns, best shepherd knows how to activate mines. To activate one mine, he would be using a number of coins. Yeah, it should be mentioned somewhere. Yeah, here it is. And if a building is uh, activated and suppose it is activated at index x then it will also be activating the buildings at x minus 1 and x plus 1 if those contains a mine. If there is no mine in those two buildings at x minus 1 x x plus 1 then obviously we cannot activate if there is no building. And if suppose a building is not containing any mine he can place a mine under a building if it wasn't there for such operation he would be using b coins uh, those two operations can be performed any number of times we want to blow up all the mines in the city to make it safe to find the minimum number of coins that the shepherd will have to pay and these are the constraints now let's see how we can solve this problem 
so we have a string let's consider the first example which is let's consider the second one which is here a is equal to 5 and b is equal to 1 and the string is 0 double 1 0 and triple 1 0 now I'll come back to this example in a while let's see if I have a set of contiguous ones in this I just need to activate one building it will uh, ultimately activate all the buildings so I would be using only a number of coins a number of coins to blow up all these buildings if we have if I have a consecutive set of ones and if if I'm having a zero then either I can just go ahead with my uh, pro procedure or I can place a mine at this uh, at this uh, particular building it, I would be using B uh, coins to place a mine now where I it would be beneficial to use B suppose uh, I have a string which which has a zero in between so I can put a mine here which I would be uh, I would be able to by using B number of coins then I would be having a larger set of contiguous ones to blow up all these I just need a number of coins so to blow up all this we I can use a plus B number of coins or I can uh, separately blow up all the buildings of these these four buildings and separately blow up blow up these four buildings in that case I would be using a plus a number of coins and I've explained the second way which is equal to a plus B now I have built a recursive solution for to solve this problem let's call it solve and the first parameter of this is the index itself like I would be moving from left to right in my string and it is zero based indexing and the next parameter is a binary para binary state you can say it will it uh, the value of that parameter would be either zero or one let's call it blow or oh, what the uh, parameter blow suggests uh, suggests or signifies is if the value of blow is zero it means I do not need to blow any buildings which I, I have traversed till this point but if the value of this is one it means that yes I have been uh, traversing a set of buildings and I need to blow up or activate of sub one building such that all the ones which were or if there are any ones behind that one as well all all of them would be blown uh, blown away or blown out so if it is one it means I need to activate one building at least like only one building so in that case I would be using a number of coins and if it is zero uh, I do not uh, need to blow up any building now let's uh, this is for the argument blow and let's see if I am if uh, I'm a, I am at a, uh, any particular index idx if the value of that building suppose si is equal to 1 it means uh, there is a mine below this building so I have two options here either I can just blow it right away in that case I would be uh, using a number of coins or I can move ahead with my recursive call and I'll uh, maybe I'll try to blow it later on so I'll call my recursive function on idx plus one on the next building and I'll set my blow as one because yes there is some there are some building which are behind this particular index which I need to blow like which I still have not uh, fired them yet and if uh, the value of any building is zero I have two choices either I can move ahead or I can place a mine in this building in that case I would be using a B number of coins and I can move ahead with my recursive call and I would be setting the value of B as 1 because as I've placed a mine there in the next recursive call if the value of blow blow is 1 it tells me that yes I've placed a mine before this particular index and I, I need to blow it afterwards now let's see the code now I think it would be more clear if I, if I go through the code uh, I have explained the arguments if the value of id is equal to 1 it means I have traversed or processed all the buildings of my array and if still the value of blow is one if the blow is one it means I need to activate the buildings which are just behind the current index so in that case I'm returning a otherwise if the value of blow is zero it means I do not need to 
blow any mine or activate any mine so i'm returning zero at that point and if the i have already calculated the value of dp i'm returning it otherwise i need to calculate the answer now i have uh, divided it into two parts if the value of blow is one it means i have been uh, going through a contiguous set of ones till this point and i have not fired them yet i have not activated them yet so i need to activate them and now i will be considering the current building if the value of current building is one itself so uh, then i'll move ahead with my recursive call i move to the next building and the value of blow will remain the same that is one suppose initially the value of uh, i am uh, moving through a con continuous set of ones whose length uh, is equal to two and if i see even the current building is having a mine so in that case i would be just uh, placing them together and moving ahead with my recursive call because to blow up uh, to activate two buildings or to activate three buildings in both the cases i would would be only using a number of coins so i move ahead and the blow value of blow is one itself otherwise if i see the current uh current building if there is no mine in the current building s of idx is equal to zero then this is this case in this case i have two choices either i can just blow the buildings which i have traversed till this point that that are these two ones like the buildings i have been travel i have traversed the continuous set of ones <clears throat> to blow them uh, I need a number of coins and I'll move ahead with my recursive call idx plus one and the value of blow would be zero in that case because I have uh, covered the buildings till this point and the current building is not having any mine so and the other choice with which I would be having I can simply place a mine in the current building as s of id s idx is equal to zero to place a mine in this particular building I would be using b number of coins and then i'll go through go ahead with my recursive call the value of b is set to one as yes i have built some buildings to activate otherwise if i see the value of blow is equal to zero it means before this index i do not have any other building any buildings uh, more than more than the other building number of buildings can even be more than one i do not have any buildings which i need to activate so i only need, only need to consider the current building if i see the current building is having a mine i move ahead with the recursive call and set the value of blow is equal to one it it will tell me in my next recursive call that there are some buildings which i need to activate otherwise if the value of blow is equal to zero as well as the current building is not having any mine i'll simply move ahead i do not need to do anything with this particular building and the value of blow would be zero and this is the answer which i am returning i hope this uh, explanation clears you all the doubts the problem c is called the deliver dilemma i am going to explain it in my own words please read out the problem statement so in this we have n dishes from 1 to n and there is a guy called petya i hope i am pronouncing his name correctly and these n dishes are can needs to be these end dishes need to be gather, gathered at a particular place at Petya's home and they are they are placed at n different or they are present at n different restaurants at the end Petya need to collect all these n uh, dishes and for each of the dishes the Petya guy has two choices either he can uh, uh, order it online he after if he chooses to uh, order it online then the courier would be delivered to his home in ai times after if we are starting at a time at t equal to zero then after ai minutes the courier would be would reach to his home otherwise he can simply go to the shop itself and pick it up he'll be going to the shop pick it and come back to his home and to do this all of this he it uh he would be using bi minutes and for each of the dishes he has two choices and so we need to find out the minimum minimum uh time used to collect all this end dishes at petya's home now there are some things which we need to consider suppose i'm talking about the dishes which are ordered online 
if i'm ordering the dishes online then they are working simultaneously or concurrently so if there is a dish which will be reached to Pattaya's home in three minutes and if there is some other dishes which will reach to Pattaya's home in four minutes then if i want to find out the maximum time i need such that these two dishes will reach to my home it would be equal to four minutes which is the maximum of these two so in other words if i am placing x dishes online so all uh the maximum to that max the time needed to get all the these x dishes to Pattaya's home would be the max of all these x dishes that is the max of all ais for all these dishes suppose there are yes let's take an example suppose there are five dishes and the value of ai for all of them are five six uh, ten eleven and two and that all of them would be delivered to Pathia's home concurrently the maximum time i need uh, at which i would be having all these five dishes is equal to max of all these which is equal to five now this is for the first case when we are deliver we are ordering the dishes online for the second case when Pathia's Pathia is going to the shop himself and he's going to pick up the dishes dish and come back to his home and in that case he, he will be using bi number of minutes and this process is not concurrent or it is not simultaneous so if there are two dishes to get to pick the dish one and come back to his home he needs five minutes and for some other dishes some for other dish d2 to do the same he needs 10 minutes let's see so to do this processing that is going to the shop picking up the or dish and come coming back to the home he would be using 5 plus 10 minutes which is equal to 15 so it is not the case that we are picking the maximum of all these so if, I'm, if we are talking about the second case when the path is going to the shop himself then the time used to collect all such dishes is equal to the summation of all such dishes which we have uh, which we have chosen to pick it up by ourselves now we need to uh, choose a certain combination like for like for part all the buildings whether we are ordering them online ordering it online or we are going to the shop by ourselves now <clears throat> to solve this problem what i would be doing first i'll sort the array ai why i would, I would be sorting them because after sorting them let's say this array is sorted so if i'm talking about this particular value now to get this particular dish at my home i need four minutes so i would be sure that if i'm talking about this building at this at this time which is equal to four i would also be having all the dishes which is to the left of it because the time need to get them to our home is lesser than equal to five less than equal to four i'm sorry so when I have sorted them accordingly and if I'm talking about this particular dish the time used is equal to 6 and again I would be sure that at time 6 I obviously I would have got all these dishes as well the 2, 3, 4 which are having the time 2, 3, 4 so I will sort them <coughs> according to AI value and I'll consider all the cases if I'm picking, if I'm picking, uh, if I'm ordering any dish, zero dishes online. If I'm ordering one dish online, two dish, and so on. So let's say I am having these number of dishes, and they are sorted according to the value AI. And this for this particular index AI, the time need, the time needed to collect all these dishes online is equal to this which is equal to max of all this so let's say this is index i so this is equal to ai and i've chosen uh, i've decided that for all the dishes which is to the right of this particular index i would be going to my going to the shop and come picking picking the my dish and coming back to my home itself now to collect all these dishes i would be using suppose the values of these are x y z I would be using x y z 
time and if you see even these two operations are happening concurrently like simultaneously because Pathia can order the dish online and just he can do the both uh, simultaneously he can order the dish as well as he can go to the shop for example yeah I, I suppose you have ex uh, uh, understood my point let's say an example for sake for the sake suppose I'm ordering this dish as online and I'm going to pick this up and yes this is the BI values this is these are not the AI because we are going to go in to the shop picking the, my our dish and coming back to the home itself and these are AIs and these are BIs if I am uh, ordering this dish online the time taken to order these dishes is maximum of this is equal to 3 and if I am for these two dishes if I am uh, going to the uh, restaurant itself then the time needed to get all the dishes is equal to 5 now even these two things are happening concurrently so the time needed to collect all these four dishes would be equal to the maximum of three or five which is equal to five now let's take an example i will be explaining how i solve this problem like using the code i think uh, the first example would be clear so we have four uh, dishes the value of a is are three seven four five three seven four five and the value of bi is a two one two four two one two four these are online and we are going to the shop in this case now let's write down the index of this as well let's write down one two three four one two three four now i would be sorting this ai according to the value according to the values and also i would be uh, considering the end not considering like i would be maintaining the index of this dot particular values as well so after sorting them the values will become three four five seven and the index of those would be one three four and two now i'll write down the bi's just below this per array my new array ai and i will be writing down this array bi according to these indexes like one three four two so for index one the value of bi is two for index 3 the value of bi is 2 for index 4 the value of bi is 4 and for index 2 the value is 1 now i just need to consider these two arrays now let's draw these lines it means if i am at this point i am ordering zero dishes online and all the dishes all our dishes i am going to the shop itself so the answer would be maximum of zero or the summation of all these bi's which is equal to 9 so it would be maximum of 0 or 9 so if i choose to order zero dishes online the answer would be 9 so, and if i am at this point that is i am ordering one dish online and for all the three dishes i am going to the shop now to order one dish online i need three uh, three minutes as you can see this three and to collect the remaining three dishes to from the shop itself i need to add up these four these three bi's which is equal to seven now for one the answer is seven now let's consider the seven uh, second case when i'm ordering two dishes online and going to the shop for the two dishes now to go to order two dishes online i need four maximum time is four and to collect these two dishes the time is five so the maximum of 4 and 5 is equal to 5 itself so for 2 answer is equal to 5 now for the last case <coughs> not the last one <coughs> so i would be ordering three dishes online the time would be 5 and to collect the last dish the time is 5 the maximum of these two terms is 5 also the last case is would be i am when i am ordering all the dishes online in that case this answer is 7 and as i am not uh, <coughs> uh what i so as i am not uh, going to the shop for any dish i do not need to consider time answer for this case is equal to seven now for all these values i need to pick up the minimum as my answer because i can choose any way which is giving the least number of minutes 
and if you see these two combinations are the optimal one when i'm ordering first two dishes online or the first three as online the answer is five for this case let's see the code now uh, you must analyze the code just by yourself first of all to take the ai i've inserted them in a pair of in a pair the first value signifies the value of ai the second was the index and the value of bi is first inputted in the array b then my new bi which i am placing this this one according to the indexes these indexes which i found after sorting the array a so i have rearranged the value of bi's i am storing those values in my vector db so yes and this is the suffix sum which i would be using so suffix sum for for suffix sum i which is equal to the summation of all the bi's from i is equal to 1 to n minus 1 summation of all the bi's this is the suffix sum and it is used to find out the sum suppose i need to find out the sum of these three terms it is simply equals to it is simply equal to suffix of 1 so yes i have taken the input here this is the first value of ai and the second was the index as i had mentioned then i sorted the array at the array a which is which is, which contains the pairs and i read the array b and this is the new array which i organized according to the new indexes of my array a and array is sort array is, is now sorted according to the value ais now is it now it is also rearranged according to the indexes i'm going from index 0 to n and for all these uh and like this is for the uh for the calculation of my suffix vector you can just read this you know you will be able to understand it and for my answer i have this i represents the number of dishes i am the number of dishes i am using or choosing to order online like if i choose to order first i digits online it is it is equal to the ai dot f and the remaining one would be needed to pick remaining remaining one need to need uh, to be picked up from the shop itself for that i need the sum of all those terms which are to the right of index i which is equal to the summing so some uh, suffix sum of i plus one and i'm taking the minimum of all those such terms for all those combinations last one is extreme subtraction i think the explanation of this problem is going to be a little tricky i'll try my best so i we have been given an array of positive integers we have n positive integers and we can perform two operations we can choose uh, an contiguous segment from starting from the first index and I, we can decrement all those values by one or we can choose a, a contiguous segment which ends at the last index it can start from any index and we, it can be decremented by one we we can perform those two operations any number of times at the end we want to find out if we can convert this array into an array which contains all all the values of those the new array are zeros let's see how we can solve this problem now the first thing which we need to focus here is we can only perform operations from two and either from the left end or the right end I would be using this example to explain my solution. I'll try my best. Now let's pick this example 117968. 117968. So there is a few things which I need to explain. Suppose I'm talking about the operation when I'm choosing the left hand. If I want to pick a certain index i, starting from the index 0 and if I want to decrement all of those terms all of those must be equal to must be e uh, greater than equal to 1 only then I want to perform that operation because in any of the operations we cannot increment the value of any element but at the end we want all the values as 0 so if 
even one of our element becomes minus one, it cannot be turned back to zero. So the maximum or the minimum value we can have in any of any element is zero itself. So we can perform our operation only when all the values in our range they must be equal they must be at least one only then we want to perform the operation and let's consider the two uh, let's consider two elements only where the first element is the first element of our array or any let's say yeah we will consider in this case if i want to perform the operation for this if i'm talking about till this point yes i can perform the operation 11 times and it will convert to zero but if i'm talking about these two indexes then after performing the operation seven times i would be getting the in my new array would be four zero then i cannot go ahead after this particular index if i want to increase my i because if i include this index one after performing these then it will become minus one so my point is if i'm at this this if i'm having this situation where the first element is greater than the second one then i can only perform this operation this number of times suppose the we i'm having a and b i can only perform b number of times because then it will become zero and a would be equal to a minus b which is four zero in that case now i cannot perform any operation which starts from index zero but if our first value is lesser than the second value then we can simply we can simply take this index and perform the operation 11 times in that case the value will become uh, 11 and 2 even in this case we cannot perform any more operations if I, if we are considering about the left operation which starts at the left end because then it will become negative the first number will become negative similarly to the right end when we are moving not moving when performing the right uh, second operation suppose this is the uh, rightmost element of our array this is the second rightmost even in this case we can only perform it maximum of seven times and then it will become zero and four so we can go we cannot go ahead of this index if we want to go to left of this and perform this operation it will not help us yes we can decrease the value of i what we can do is then we can perform these we can take i is equal to n minus 1 and perform this, op this operation four times then it will convert to 0 comma 0 but my point is in that case we cannot move to the left anymore and in this case if i've converted a number to zero then i cannot move to the right of it yeah if i uh, uh, explain the gist of it if a number becomes zero then i cannot perform an operation which is considered consisting that particular index so if i'm talking on the left side my index cannot go beyond this and if i'm talking on the right right uh, operation i my my index cannot go till in idx like it cannot reach to idx it can reach to idx plus one in even if only even the case only in the case when this value is greater than zero so i will be maintaining a value minimum <coughs> which will tell me if i'm going downwards then i can always convert this these values into zeros because let's say the values are 11 7 and 5 Oh, first we can perform five operation till this point then the array will become six and two then we can perform two operation till this point the array will become four zero we can perform four operation till this point the new array would be zero comma zero so if we are decreasing this way we can always con convert all these values to zero similarly if i'm talking about the right end point of my array if i'm we are decreasing we're moving from right to left from our right end point and the values are decreasing even in that case we can convert all these values to zeros again for example the values are 5 3 1 we can first perform one operation till this point the value would be this then two operation till this point value would be this then two operation till this point and the value would be 0 0 0 
so for all these this can be converted to zero for all these these can be converted to zero if our array is somewhere here but the main point is the middle part let's take the case when suppose the left we yeah, i'm talking i'm when i'm moving from left to right and my first value is 4 and the second one is 2 and let's say this is 8 so if i'm moving from left to right i'm maintaining a value called minimum which tells me the minimum number of, of the operating number of operations i can perform till this point okay so till this point i can perform four operation now my move ahead I cannot increase the number of operations if I'm moving from left to right. Number of operations can only decrease, it cannot increase because I've taken the maximum of it till this point. If I increase it even by one, if I perform it five times, this number will come negative. So this I will be maintaining a minimum of it. Now the number of six, number is six, but I can only perform the operation maximum four times. So after performing it four, four times, this new array will convert to 4 2 and 8 and i am at this point i can perform the operation only four times i cannot perform the operation from left side now this is zero but now we have a two remaining at this point this two can only be converted into zero from the second operation because now this operation has been blocked the first one this two can only be converted into zero from the second operation when I am considering the case when uh, my my rightmost point of my contiguous segment ends at the last element. Now to reach to this point, I should make sure that all the values which are to the right of this two must be at least two because suppose if even one value is one which is less than two in between and to convert this two into zero i need two operations but if i am performing an operation till this point then this one also this one is also including in, in this part and if i perform operation two times on this one it will convert to minus one so it will not give us the optimal answer or we will need to print no so my point is if my values are increasing what were the values it were, it were 4 6 and 8 and suppose i performed the operation four times till this point now the values are 4 6 uh, 0 2 and 8 now this two should be removed from the right point so i should make sure that all the values which are to the right of it should be at least two only only then I would be able to reach to this index from right such that this two can be converted to zero. So what I would be doing to make sure that I would, I'm having at least a two to the right of this two when I'm considering this head, I see that the min maximum operation I can perform is four because I was moving in this direction left to right. So in that case, yes, I can perform the operation four times. The new array would be equal to four. But let's say the next value is three. Next value is three. So I cannot perform the op and I want all the values which are to the right of his right of this two. They should be at least two. And to convert this three, I cannot to if I, we are considering this three. We cannot perform the operation more than once because if we perform the operation more than once when we are considering the first one it will become lesser than two so the maximum time we can perform an operation if we are considering this till this index is one because we want this value to be at least two such that in our second processing when we would be performing the operation from the right end we would be able to reach this point so then will our minimum will reduce to 1 now, now the new array would be 0 2 4 2 and we'll keep on going we'll make sure that all the values which are to the right of it are at least 2 and will it can also increase the value of 
this value can also increase yes you need to analyze it analyze this and in our second uh, iteration we will be performing the second second operation from where we are considering the right points suppose after performing all these we are also deducting the values from our array the new values after deducting it would be suppose they are 8 7 6 0 0 0 then these can be converted into zeros if i'm considering about the second operation how we perform six times till this point there it would be 0 1 2 one time till this index and one time till this index now it would be 0 comma 0 so for our second operation the array should look something like this like the value should dip if we are moving from right to left if we if at any moment we see the value has dipped and then increased or it is simply increasing i mean then we cannot convert that into a one into a zero if we are only left with the second operation for example if the values are three one two and we can we can only perform the second operation yes we can uh, convert we can uh, perform the operation once after performing it one it will become two zero one now we cannot convert this two into a zero because to convert it into a zero we need to perform the operation two times till this point and then it will con this zero will convert to minus two and if we try to convert this one into a zero it will be two zero zero so there is no way then we can convert our array into all zeros yes it was the hardest problem which i had explained in the in the cpd channel i hope you understood it i do not think you would be you could my explanation but i tried you know so this okay basically tells me whether till this point i can convert my array into all zeros this leave it is the value which i need to leave to make sure that all the values are at least this for example after moving to the right of this i need to make sure that all the values which are to the right of it are at least two and this represents leave this is the minimum I am maintaining when, when we are, I am moving from left to right and while I am moving I am also directing the values from my array. I can always convert the first element into a zero then I keep on moving till index i min uh, till the second last element and if at any point I see the current value is less than equal to leave. It means I need to make sure that all the values which are right to right of it should be at least two and if the value is two itself then i cannot perform any operation on this index also on the right of it the first operation so i simply break out of the loop otherwise i update my minimum this is to make sure that it is having at least uh, that particular value on that index that, that this is two that two and i'm deducting the value i'm also deducting the leave and in my second iteration i'm moving from right to left i'm uh, seeing if the value increase increases at any time which i was talking about like if it increases at any time and i'm only left with the second operation i can never convert it into zeros so i'm breaking out of the loop otherwise i am updating my minimum and uh, making the current element at zero after performing those two operations my all the elements of my array should be equal to zero if even one element is not equal to zero which is checked by this condition i update my ok and break out of the loop after i see if, if i see the value of ok is still one it means all the values have been converted into zero i print yes otherwise i print no yes this was not the good explanation i suppose but yes i explained it as this solution worked for me I hope you liked it and learned something from it. If you did, please like the hit button, share it with your friends and consider subscribing to our channel. Till then I'll see you in some other video where I'll be explaining some other problems of some other contest. Till then take care, sayonara.